And <clears throat> okay, let's say we're good to go. You have a good service right now. You good? Oh uh, yeah, I'm good. I'm, I'm on my Wi-Fi, so <laughs> should be. Well, Wi-Fi is so tricky, isn't it? It's either good or it fucking sucks. Yeah, you're right about that. I, I, I'm lucky. My Wi-Fi's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so how are you? I'm doing pretty well. Um, just chilling. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. I've been actually listening to your album the entire week. Oh wow! Really? And um, yeah, just dissecting it and stuff like that. And thank you. Oh no, man, you're making you're making good music. Thank you. you. Know I saying? appreciate that so much because, you know, I know people are busy and I just appreciate the time you give to, you know, listen and stuff. So. No, absolutely. I think um, you have something going. Uh, you're very unique in many different ways, which we you know we'll discuss, you know, in, 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 throughout this podcast. And, mm-hmm. you know, um, I know you had sent, you know, you had told me that you originally was born in India, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm not. So, so, yeah. so what age did you move to the States? Like, when did you I leave mean, India? I mean, I've been living in the States my entire life since I was, like, three. Um, okay. I was born in India, and I lived in the UK for a couple of years. Like, obviously, I don't remember any of this. Right. But, um, I mean, I did move around a lot, so it did kind of shape my life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's what it's all about, right? I mean, I'm assuming that's where you're getting your your rhymes from, you know, you, mm-hmm. because hip-hop is so expressive. You right. And, and, and from what I'm hearing from you, like, you're really getting deep. Like, you're something I haven't heard in a very long time. You know what I'm saying? Like, everyone's doing the pop top type of hip-hop or whatever. Uh-huh. But you're actually saying a lot of good shit in your hip-hop. Wow, thanks, man. Appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just try to take from my life directly. And, I mean... I just write what I feel. It's it's all about expression and art, man. That's that's what I'm all about. And you know, being a creative person and just doing my thing. I'm just blessed that so many people are listening to it. You know, I mean, I don't know. Didn't expect this, but I'm just. I've always been a creator. You know. Yeah, yeah, and no, that's fantastic. And what? So, what does that? What does that creative process look like for you? Like, what gets you in the zone? What sets you off? Is it the beat? Is it something in your head and then you find a beat? Like, how do you write your rhymes? What And how do, how do you just, I guess, compose your music? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So uh, it's different for, for everything. I usually go off of feeling and, um, like, um, sometimes the, the lyrics comes, come first and, you know, I'll, I'll – think about or I'm like regrets the turbulent waves like different faces like I um the lyrics came first for that song and I was just you know sometimes I I you know and then I usually just you know it's just an idea and then I look for a beat and then you know that vibe just adds adds more to the emotional content of the song you know what I'm saying but absolutely yeah, I, I don't know how to. It's, it's always different for for every song I do. It's it's different. As it should be, right? Because it's so inspirational by your life, by that moment in life, right? Right, absolutely. So it's gonna it's gonna just be anything. A freaking breeze could come by, and and make you feel something, and or a smell could could hit you, and like wow, that's what my grandmother used to to make in a kitchen or something like that. And you just start having memories of shit. Oh, um, I, I, yeah, totally. Like sometimes I just wake up with lyrics in my head or a, a memory and that will totally like inspire a song or even a, a whole project. This is different faces is the first project I have on all platforms. That's pretty like, you know, a professional quality mix. Right. That's huge. You know? That's huge. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I mean, um, yeah, I definitely do have the two other EPs. They, you know, it's it's all their own story. I made them at different times, so like, but it's all the same. You know, the lyricism and expression is all there. You know, is Detroit home base for you now? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yes. Yeah. So Detroit is 
where I live now. And, you know, I moved out here for work and various reasons. But um, I'm always going back and forth. I do have a show in um, in the Bay Area coming up in March, actually, that I'm excited That's about. That's what's up. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to not lose all my ties out there because I do have family and friends out there. You know? Right. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's fantastic. So what does the booking process look like for you? Like, how did that start for you and how is that going currently for you? Yeah. So um, this is actually be a pretty special uh, show. It's like a gender. It's it's uh, Crip Hop. Leroy, I had an interview with Leroy Moore, who is a disabled activist, who also, he's also a poet and um, an artist. And I've, I've been in contact, I mean, I've known about him for many years, and I used to volunteer in the Bay Area, in Berkeley, that's where I'm doing my show. And... Shoot, what was I saying? So he's he's basically putting on that show, and it's a bunch of different women who have disabilities who do um, music and poetry, and it's going to be a pretty cool event that's going on on March 30th in Berkeley. Oh, wow, that's fabulous, man. Yeah. That's, that's what's up. So I, I haven't really been booking, like, shows, you know, anywhere other than in the Detroit area. But I'm blessed to have that opportunity and that connection. No, absolutely. Because in that way, you know, you can really just kind of uh, market that as much as you can on IG and, you know, promote the hell, the hell out of it. And, you know, just let people know, hey, you're around. And, and, and any little yeah. bit helps, you know what I'm saying? So Right. Right. I need to get – I haven't – started um marketing putting that out yet but i definitely want people to come out to that show you know yeah i, w- I would start doing that shit now start buzzing now the definitely. more the more people know about it ahead of time the more you want the people want to go see you then if you wait too close to the to the moment it's kind of too late people are like, oh, i already made fucking plans someplace else mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying you want people to schedule that shit in so they can see go uh, go, go, go ahead and see you and bring uh bring attention to that to that whole dynamic you know what i'm saying because that's huge, you know. Um, yeah. Now you, now you, you, you said that it's, uh, it's for like disabilities. Do you have a disability yourself? Yeah, I do. Yes. Yeah. So I haven't. Um, a lot of people don't know. I have cerebral palsy, and so um, it does affect. It's basically um, it affects speech and motor control. But I have a, a pretty mild version of it. But um, you know, it does. Um, I, I talk about it because it does affect my music. You know, I can't really rap in certain patterns. I can't rap t- really fast. So, like, it just it makes me think out of the box and be really creative with my music. And also, um, you know, I want people, you know, music is for everyone, no matter what, you know, um, what disability you have. And so I, I just... You know, I guess I want to keep doing what I'm doing because I get people people saying that they're inspired or something. And, like, you know, I just want to spread that positive vibe and show people that, you know, no matter what, you can follow your dreams. No, you're, you're 100% on that. Yeah. Like, hip-hop is for everybody. Listen, I grew up in Brooklyn. I grew up in the era, the golden era of hip-hop. Oh, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And um, it's... It's it's for everyone, you know. You know, coming from New York, it was it was just centralized. It was just East Coast, and then it started spreading around. It's worldwide, and it's a huge fucking culture that affects a lot of people worldwide. You know what I'm Absolutely. saying? So, Absolutely. you know, so it crosses all genders, all barriers. No matter what, it's gonna cross. It's gonna cross into it. And for you to uh, to to accept what you have, and then say, you know what? I'm still gonna fucking rap. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna figure out how to wrap around it, mm-hmm. and you and use it to be the genuine you that you are. Right. I, I, I find that fucking amazing. I think you're amazing on that. You know what Thank I'm saying? You. Thank um, you. That means a lot. No, you're you're fucking fantastic. You're dope as fuck. Um, I I think that you just have to, you know, um, man, I I think you, I think you're doing it. You're doing it right. You know, since so just take your time with it, keep on with the craft, keep on doing what you're doing. Right, just keep out, keep on yeah. putting more stuff out and stuff, and that's definitely what draws me to hip hop. Is um, 
you know, the inclusivity, I've always felt kind of like an outcast, you know, so it's like, um, I don't know, there's something about hip hop, you know, you said you're from New York, and that, that movement in the 90s, just like, I've just been studying hip hop lately, and it's just so inspiring. And like, that's, that's what I'm all about inclusivity and music and creativity and positive vibes, basically. So, so you mentioned like, you know, having some, some challenges and stuff like that. Is that within yourself or have you seen people within the culture giving you uh, feedback or pushback because you have, um, you have cerebral palsy? You mean like, in a like in a negative, in a negative way. Yeah. Um, not really. I've got so far people hear that and they're like, they're pretty, you know, um, I get mostly positive feedback, but definitely in the beginning from from family and from people I knew personally, people were like, oh, like, you know, your voice is too shaky to, to make music. Like, why why are you trying? You know, I got I got that message from some people early on. And um, I don't know. I just kept going. I used that more as, OK, here's some things I got to work on in my music and like you know how to I I don't know I just it's all about being myself and I can't stop making music you know I love it so no that's fantastic and sometimes yeah. the family's the worst fucking critic right like they they just don't get it <laughs> you know, I feel you I can really a hundred percent there you know sometimes a lot of times family don't fucking get it you know they, they tend to be the first one to tell you you can't do something and that's the wrong thing to fucking do. Because at the end of the day, what they just did was give you the fucking fire and the fuel to go after. No, I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm going to go after it anyway. Say, fuck this shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And that's yeah. good for you, though. I'm glad I'm glad that didn't stop you or deter you from doing what you're going to do. And and it looks like, you know, you said, fuck, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead. And once you find the right producer, too, though, right. a lot of things can change for you. Because then beats can be made for you that's going to follow your style and flow. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you're right about that I do um it's, it's definitely super important to find a producer I'm blessed to work with um a producer named New Calvin he mastered different faces and he's mastering my next EP so um you know just shout out just I just want to say like I'm blessed to to have that you know speaking of producers no absolutely yeah. so so AJ420, so uh, how did the name come about, AJ420? Hmm. Well, I, I don't know. Like, I just, um, that it's kind of funny. Like, I don't really have a story behind that name too much. I just, uh, last year or in, in 2017, at the, towards the end, I was just like, I want to make music. And I thought about releasing something I'd made. And so I was like, oh, I need a rap name. So I, I don't know. I just... I guess AJ420, what I it it was just kind of random. It came up, but what I like about it is that it's kind of open ended. Like it gives me um, room because, um, like at first I was making very depressing music, but like you know AJ420 with that name, I can just kind of switch up my vibe. You know, right. um, like I considered the name Ashes, but then. I don't know that I guess the name has a lot, you know, a lot because that's the first thing you see of an artist, you know, their name. But I don't know. It, it's catchy as fuck. AJ Force. And it, you know, you start asking questions, who is this person? What are they doing? How you know what they you know, what's, what's the music sound like? So mm -hmm. I think the I think the name is hot. I think it fits you good. You know what I'm saying? I mean that that's what I'm saying. My music is pretty um versatile so i like the name because it's kind of open-ended like you're like you're just curious you know so you said in the beginning you were doing some some dark type of music what, what, what caused that yeah um you know i was just going through a depression and like you know just being myself expressing myself and my feelings that's what you know the month of me and ashes is really more um 
more sad vibes. I'd say different faces. It's all still like it's real. It's there's some there's some sad vibes on it, but it's not all depressing, you know. Yeah, definitely. I know my goal is not not to like I don't want to put out super sad stuff all the time, but like it it you know it's all about self expression and I I did have some people say that you know even though like the song cry on month of may i get people people were like oh that song literally made me cry but it made me feel better cuz like it's relatable you know no absolutely and you know it's if that's what you feel that's what you feel yeah and i love that in music like i love listening to music that is relatable like that so what made you choose hip hop over any other genre i mean I wanted to be a singer when I was younger, but like it's it's just I'm just I can't sing. That's <laughs> I can't freaking sing. That's just a fact. So and um so that's what that's why I rap and you know I've always been into poetry and writing and I really like you know the lyricism behind you know writing rap. And, and just hip hop in general. And yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's just something I discovered I could do, and I really enjoy it. I enjoy freestyling. That's how I sort of started out. Really, just freestyling. No, that's great because that's that's how that's how shit begins. That's how things just start. You know, just by just by goofing off with some shit and trying it out, and right. And then it takes off, and then all of a sudden you have a fucking EP, and you're working on your second one. You know what I'm saying? Or you have a or you have a show in San Fran in March. Like it's funny how things just transpire. Yeah, it's crazy. Like I just started doing this a year ago and then now I'm doing a podcast. So So that that's what's up. That's that's what's up. Like, you know, I found you on, on IG because I follow a lot of a lot of hip hop heads and mm-hmm. a lot of I like to talk to my podcast is mainly about really talking to 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 hip hop heads who artists who are just starting who are just in the come up because you always hear about the successful folks you know what i'm saying like you already you already see that they're already there or whatever but i like the people like don't like you know the struggle is real right people still got a fucking day job where they're trying to go to the show or whatever and try to manage this or try to figure out the business side of it so yeah right now i know you you said you, you got you're working on your second ep you know you got the show in march has the business side come up for you yet or is this just has has this just become? I want. I don't want to say a hobby, but mm-hmm. you know, is is it right now? Is it just something you're trying out still? Is is, is it a hobby? Right. I well, I don't. I don't really consider it a hobby because, like, I know I work so hard on it. I mean, I do have a day job, but that's you know, I come back and all I do is music, and I I do want to move forward with it, but um, and like I do have. Some business stuff has come up, you know. I, I work with Delirious Entertainment, and I have been a lot of opportunities through them. And um, you know, I just need to figure out how to market my music more effectively, and I I need to learn the business side a bit more. You know, it's it's all still really new to me, and so I don't know. I'm kind of transitioning, you know. No, no doubt, like. I think yeah. right right now, if you know, do have your fan base, you secure your fan base, you know, grow your followers and stuff, and you know, um, independent is a huge thing now because anybody could, with a computer and some software, you you like you have an EP and you're on all platforms, you know right. what I'm saying, which is amazing. So, you know, different faces. I I like different faces. I like your album cover. Thanks. I I haven't watched the video you have on on YouTube. Um, yeah, or different faces, um, which is cool. I thought it was real cool. I think it fit the actual song really well. Thank um, you so much. Appreciate that. No, of course. And so this year you're gonna release another EP. What does that sound sound like? What does it look like? Like, have you evolved from 2018? And what does 2019 look like for AJ20? Yes. Yeah, so um, it is different for sure. Um, it's. I mean, it's more. Of, um, the the emotional whole the whole emotional vibe of 
myself that whole thing is still there uh it's it's still based on my experiences it's definitely evolved a little bit it's more melodic um it's more i guess i'm more comfortable as an artist um i was still kind of finding myself during different places like what am what's aj420 what what is what where should i be going with this but i'm kind of more sure where i'm doing what i'm doing now so it's basically chill lyrical um it's a bit i don't know that the content is a bit what's the word uh I, I don't know man it's it's just it's pretty expressive it's intense emotionally intense it's it's the lyrics will kind of shock you i guess i'm just trying to you know be myself it's pretty provocative that's that's the word i was looking for it's okay. provocative in some ways that's what's up so when, when can we expect that project to drop yeah okay so i really um I'm my artist who I is my friend from high school I'm working with. She's working on the cover art right now. And I'm just, I'm still thinking about names and stuff like that. But I definitely want to drop them in February, maybe the end of February, but before March, for sure. That's cool. So that means you can go into March with the new EP, um, especially when you go to perform. Right, that, definitely. For for in Berkeley, I'm gonna definitely do songs off my new EP. So, no, that's what's up. So, what's so? How's the performance thing looking like in Detroit? Like, where you? What is what is your weekends or weekdays, weeknights? You know, look like you know, as far as performances. Like, you know, what are you doing to get performances out in Detroit? Right. I mean. Uh, I've been connecting through folks on Instagram, Facebook. So my first performance was at the Bullfrog Bar and Grill, like last October or November, and um, it, you know, I got that through Instagram. And then at that show, I met a promoter, Dub Shack, and like now I just basically go to all his shows. And there's this bar out in Allen Park. Simon's after dark, and that's kind of my spot now. Like, I just show up at the open mics whenever I feel like it, and um, you know, I'm going there this Saturday. They have a showcase, so um, hosted by Dub Shack and uh, various different artists are performing. Is it's really cool because that you know, even though I've been going through, I I've gone to a couple different places. I performed in Ohio as well. But, you know, it's mostly been at Simon's After Dark. But I've got a lot of different opportunities, you know. Every time I perform, I feel like I gain a fan or something. So, right. totally worth it, you know. No, and absolutely. I love, it. I love the lifestyle, you know. That's like, you know, on the weekends, I'm always down there, you know, hanging out. You know, um, it's, it's just a cool lifestyle. And everyone lo loves music. That's no, you're yeah, right. Oh, when you, yeah, when you surround yourself with people who are the people who love music, then yeah. good shit happens. You know, you start making connections, and it's all about networking, right? So yeah, definitely. The, the more you go out, the more you fucking network. You know, the more successful you're gonna become because because of those connections. Hell you know? yeah! Like I was just at my homie's house like the other day making a song. We we didn't really get anywhere with it, but you know, it's it's all about doing that and. I just love the lifestyle, you know. I'm I'm kind of sick of the whole internet thing, you know. I I really enjoy going out and meeting people and doing stuff in real life. No, absolutely. I think and I think like everything everything has its place, right? So if if artists back in the '90s had IG or Facebook or whatever, um, hip hop probably wouldn't have been bigger even then. It was big. It was big back in the '90s. You know what I'm saying? It was huge. Right. And they did it without it. You know, so for you to have this medium now, it's crazy because now you can really be worldwide. You know, you're on Spotify. Anybody can find you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you're not just limited to a region. Well, back in the day, like, if you were a small artist, you were confined to your city. You know what I'm saying? And Yeah, definitely. No, it's it's a blessing. I, You know, social media is definitely a blessing. Um, 
I have people who listen to me all over the world, and it's not that many people, but, like, that's just really cool, you know, that you can reach a broad audience, you know? So let me ask you, do you have any more family in India? In India? Yeah, I do. I have, uh, my grandparents live there. I have, like, my, I have some cousins in the U.S. I have some cousins there, you know, so I, I go back and forth, you know, a, lo- a little bit. I haven't been there for a minute, but, you know. Have you ever thought about going out there and maybe performing out there? <laughs> um, I mean, if I have the opportunity to, I would, um, totally. You got to make the opportunity for yourself. You got you to gotta create that shit. You're right, man. You're right, man. Um. I do have I do have some people in India who do like who who fuck with my vibe, you know. So yeah, because because brown brown culture is come and come up. I'm Puerto Rican, you know what I'm saying from from Brooklyn. So you know, you know, Indian culture is huge, you know what I'm saying. And yeah, and for you to to be Indian and and you can tap into that, that's a that's a billion fucking people alone. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying. So that would be a that be that be insane if you can tap into that, you know, and really you know look at your roots from a different perspective. Because that may even motivate like a full album for you next time. You just never know. Yeah, you know, you totally right about that. You're right about that, man. You know what I'm saying? Because you might you might hear some yeah. sounds like yo, like this is culturally me. I never heard this sound before. Like, what the fuck? I can probably let, let me use my phone to record the sound, take it back to a producer. Yo, what can you do with the sound? Make right. something. You know what I'm saying? Like this is this is me right here. This is in my blood. Like I love when, when people really just look look at their roots and be like, yo, let me use what what I got, what mm-hmm. my roots are. Yeah, you know I've definitely saying? been thinking about that actually. I do listen to a lot of Indian music and like Bollywood, they have a whole industry out there, you know. Yeah, it's it's, it's something to be fucked with, it's something serious. Definitely. You know, and, and that, if you capitalize on that would be would be a great move on your part. You know what I'm saying? Like it'd be it'd be it would be insane. Yeah, man, I could see that and that just to create that would be creatively really fun too. No, oh, fuck yeah. Because imagine, yeah. Let, imagine let's, let's say you take someone with you that, let's say you take a producer with you so they can listen to it themselves and feel it. Mm-hmm. And then you actually maybe do some shit out there. Even if it's, even if it's rough and you come back to the States and, and kind of like, you know, refine it or whatever, like, you just never know what can happen like, with, with a trip like that. Like, it can really be, like, life-changing, you know. To your music, it could be really the the, the, the definitive, defining moment to like, yo, this is what AJ four twenty sound is. Like, you could have that unique sound for the rest of your life. It's, it, would, it could be absolutely amazing, you know. Yeah, I hear you, man. I hear you. No, that would be amazing. I'm actually, I actually have an upcoming trip to India, like, uh, I think this summer. Um, so. Definitely some, because I'm all about, like, music is just, I live and breathe music, you know? So I'm, like, excited for that trip and how it's going to influence my music, for sure. No, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. So I know you got your second EP. You say you have a day job. How are you managing all this? It's like, are you are you really managing it? Are you exhausted? (laughs) Is, like, 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 how are you fucking with everything right now? Yeah, man, I'm I'm pretty exhausted. Oh, my bad. No, you good. You good. Yeah, so no, I'm pretty exhausted, but I do manage it. And to be honest, like my like my day job is like through my family. I I have um my family owns a lot of businesses, and so my aunt's a doctor, and she has a pain clinic. So I, you know, I work for her there and she understands that music is my number one priority. So, you know, if, if I'm like, if I have way too many shows booked, like over a couple of weeks, I have the freedom to take a, a day off or two, you know? Awesome. So let me ask you about that. You said your aunt's a doctor. <clears throat> That's kind of cliche, right? That's kind of, <laughs> right? That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's kind of stereotypical, right? Indian doctors and whatever, right? So obviously, Indian culture is very strong. Like I have actually, my cousin, um, 
he's actually have you know, he's Bangladeshi, so he's by by marriage. So my cousin's yeah. Puerto Rican, she married a Bangladeshi. Very similar. Um, and then of course they had kids, and mm-hmm. they have mixed kids, you know. But the, the cultures are so different, right? So right. Um, but the cultures are very strict as far as parenting goes so indian coach is very strict as far as parents i've i've been encountered with back home in new york is that it's kind of like yo you're going to be this and you're going to do this and that's really kind of it like do you see your family in that way are they pushing you in that way or have they say well i'm gonna let you be that you do your thing or are they in disagreement of what you're doing like do you have the full support of your family well um i'm really blessed that my family is um pretty they're pretty open to, you know, creativity. You know, my brother, he, I mean, he produces music as a hobby. I have cousins who make music as hobby. And, like, I mean, I just, um, school is never really my my thing. Like, I tried studying engineering just, like, <laughs> my, <laughs> oh, God. Like no, my, no, don't tell me, AJ, don't, AJ don't, don't tell me you were trying to be a fucking engineer. Don't tell me that shit. Shit. I know. <laughs> And I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> that, that's listen. That's probably the most two, two occupations that the Indian culture really pushes. Either you're going to be an engineer, or you're going to be a fucking doctor. Yeah. Man, I I felt that pressure in my life. I mean, my parents haven't put it on me personally. It's just the culture, you know. So like, I kind of felt at one point like, oh, if I would pursue engineering, maybe that would be cool. But I was never really into it, like <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's fucking hilarious. No, but that's, that's awesome because you you know you can still be successful in music. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't want to be a shitty fucking doctor or a shitty engineer. <laughs> you know I'd be so bad. Right, Im- imagine you listen. Imagine if you were forced to be a fucking engineer, and you hated it so much that you fucking engineered a bridge, and the bridge fucking collapses. <laughs> and because you were writing your you're writing lyrics on your on your blueprint <laughs> you know <what> so. <laughs> yeah man like <laughs> you don't want to be responsible for like that many debts <laughs> not at all if not unless you, you know yeah. also if you're operating an operating table and you're too busy freestyling where you have a scalpel in your hand that's a fucking problem <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> so. right Right, you know when you're just born to be an artist, like that's kind of how I've always felt. Like I've always made art, you know. It's just yeah. it's in my blood. <laughs> that's that's what's up. I, I'm I'm so happy to hear that. That's what you just said. That that's in your blood. That's what you feel, and that you know it, it helps. It makes it a little bit easier when the fam is behind you. But at the same time, too, when they did say, "Hey, your voice is too shaky," you were like, two middle fingers up." Fuck yeah, I'm gonna do this anyway. <laughs> You hell know. yeah, hell yeah, and I'd like to say that they are, they're completely, like, on my side now, they're just like, well, like, no, your music's good, like, <laughs> like, it's just, I, I proved a lot of people, like, that I can do this with, with different faces and stuff, so. So have, have you seen where people have not taken you seriously? As far as because you have several palsy, so I guess by first impressions, right? Has has that been an issue? Um. Well, nah, I'd say not. Not for the most part. Like when uh, my first time performing, I was so nervous because, like, I kind of when I'm on stage, when I'm nervous, I let my disability kind of get the best of me, and I hate that, man. Like, I gotta, you know chill out but that's more anxiety so but i definitely feel like sometimes people do treat me differently because of that you know like um like it's not even negative it's just i noticed that like like i like i completely bombed the show once but people didn't really like no one was an asshole to me because I'm disabled. <laughs> but like that, 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 that shit, that shit is real, you know? Right. But I, like, I guess, I mean, I haven't seen that yet. I'm sure I'm going to encounter more, you know, if, as I try to grow bigger, I might encounter some more ableism and, and things like that because it, it does exist. Yeah, it does. It does. So, um, have you taken advantage 
of your disability in a good way for yourself? Like, have, have you have you ever used it to get something? Um, I mean, I try not to. <laughs> I, you try I, not to. We find, tell me the story. I want to hear it. What, what have you fucking done? You say you try not to. I guess it sounds like you try a lot. <laughs> no, no. I mean, um, that's the thing. I just, um, I mean, that's the thing. I didn't mention my disability in music. Like, no one knew I was disabled until, like, after different phases. I was like, maybe I'll mention it to, um, you know, publicly because, you know, I never wanted people to be like, oh, you know, I want to support her because she's disabled. It's just like, if you like my music, you should support me. Like, it's not about that, you know. But it's also like, I don't want to hide it because I want to inspire people, you know? No, absolutely. Because, again, that's, listen, that's the essence of who you are. Yeah. You was born the way you was born because you were supposed to have been born that way. And you're making music because you're meant to make music. Yeah, man. That's yeah, it. Definitely. That's that's it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. you wasn't meant to be a fucking doctor. <laughs> you wasn't meant to be an engineer. You know, so you're making music. You're meant to be a musician. And your story is is one that's going to be fucking unique. And if you th- if you look, if you look at hip hop, right? Hip hop has a couple of unique folks, and then a lot of people who follow. And try to grab at those coattails, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And and some people tend to make it and they finally find themselves or whatever. But I think you have everything you need in the palm of your hand. You just gotta figure out how to use it. Right, right. And it's a big world out there, you know. There's a lot of talented artists and and a lot of people that do deserve recognition. You know what I'm saying? But um, no, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. But I'm trying to. I'm trying to make it too. I, I suppose. I don't. I don't know, man. Like sometimes I get exhausted, you know, with all the the social media stuff. Like I just want to be alone sometimes and just make music. But I yeah, guess, that's, that's yeah. awesome. You have to unplug. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to unplug and just focus on your craft. Like that's yeah. something. To, I think that's something you should just schedule. You know that you're trying to make your next album. And let's say it takes you. How long it took you to make different faces? Oh, uh, like uh, I was really full, cool, like like three weeks. Okay. Yeah. So I think three weeks. You should turn your fucking phone off for the next three weeks while you make your next EP. Like you know, what I'm saying so, like you can be totally disconnected, not listen to any other music, just focusing on your craft, listening to different sounds, and right, make that shit rock off. You know, make that shit pop off because. You know, it can be a fucking distraction. And of course, if you hear something, it may influence what you want to try to put into your album. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm not the type of artist who I know people who are like, oh, I can't listen to any other music while I'm making music because I don't know. Like, I, I allow songs to influence me, but it's just that my style is so unique like that I'll just. You know, you can't really tell. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I'm not I'm not saying like I take from songs or anything, but I'm always listening to music. I'm addicted to music. So. No, that's that's fantastic. Yeah, man, but no, I know what you're saying and I definitely when I'm making my next project I do wanna unplug and like that's why sometimes I I ignore my messages and stuff. It's horrible. Like, but I need to, you know. I also need to get back to work and get back on everything, promoting my next EP and performances and all that. You no, know? definitely, definitely. I, that's that's a big portion of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, because even for myself, my podcast. You know, I, I decided to do this. I decided I didn't know what I was going to do a podcast about. But I knew I wanted to do a podcast, and I love hip hop so much. I was like, all right, let me see. Um, who I can get on. I was saying, no, fuck it. Let me just use my IG. Let me start growing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cool. And, and I just started hitting people up. I was saying, you know what? Let me just um, hashtag music, hashtag hip hop, hashtag culture. And I started finding people. I was like, yo, and I was like, and I've actually been finding a lot more people in the Midwest. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, oh. which is, which is awesome. Um, but I'm I'm trying to get worldwide and trying to talk in the, and just have people have a platform, even at a young stage of where you're at as well. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Definitely. I I really would like to say I love your podcast. I listened to an episode, um, and like I just 
yeah, I, I can hear you like the passion and I, I love what you talk about. And that's, that's totally it. Like, it, that's the thing. Like you can do whatever you want to, you know, if you dream it, just do it. And, and you, that's the beauty of the internet, you know? No, it is. Cause what we're doing essentially is a fucking radio show right now. Right. And, I don't have access to a fucking radio station. I don't have access to none of that shit. So, but what I have access to is my little home office with my with my Mac and and my yeah. mic. And I'm like, you know what? If I can get a guest, let's let's talk. Let's just let's just just hit the shit and just fucking let's talk about hip hop, talk about music. Tomorrow we'll get you involved in it and then give it out to everybody else to listen to and to hear. Because you know my audience can become now your audience. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And. And that's yeah. the biggest thing you want, because you know, honestly, like anybody you, you, as a musician, the more people listen to you, the better it means more people come to your shows, and that's that's what you want. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, you know what I'm saying? And I think you have something going. I think you have a lot of stuff on your plate for 2019 that you're gonna have to really prioritize. You know what I'm saying? Like. Mm-hmm. I yeah, think, I know what you're saying. Yeah. I think definitely a trip to India is fucking needed, man. I'm telling you, I, I'm telling. You, I think I think yeah. that's needed. Cause just because when you get there, and you go in a mindset already of yo, I need to I need to find some sounds or just absorb the culture differently from what you've done before in the past. You're gonna go there with a different lens. You might hear and see stuff differently. It may be the same right. shit you heard before. Maybe the same shit you've seen before, but now you may just absorb it a little differently. Like oh shit, it may it may hit you differently. No, totally. When when you go there, the last time I went there was like a couple of years ago, and it's a completely different vibe. Like it totally inspires me. Like it's kind of like um, I don't want to. It's not. I mean, it's not like going back in time, but it kind of is because like like not everyone's not on their phone all the time. Like people are just living and like. It's just it just seems simpler over there. I get really inspired, like, um, and I I can't wait. I can't wait. To, definitely need to go back. You know. Nah, make it happen. I'm like, you know, and if and when you do make it happen, I want you to come back on the podcast and and talk about it and talk about your experience because that would be fucking huge and how it impacted you. Yeah, sure, man. Definitely, I'm down. You know what I'm saying? Because do you have a title for your next EP? Um, oh, you're still working on that. I'm I'm still thinking about that. I have a couple names in mind, but I don't want to say because I'm not sure. <laughs> no, no, of course, of course, no yeah. doubt about it. You know, yeah. keep that to you, like you know. Yeah. Right now, as we speak, I am posting on IG. It says <laughs> cooking up a new episode, special guest AJ420. <laughs> and yes. what I like to do is when I have the artist on. I like to post my thing is I like to post on IG mm-hmm. to let people know that hey this is what I'm doing right now. This is who you know expect the next episode to come out the next day. But guess what? This is who I'm talking to right now. So I'm gonna tag I'm gonna tag you. Yeah, definitely. And I'm gonna add that to my story. And I just tagged you and I'm gonna write a little snippet and saying uh chopping it up. With AJ for that, I thought the four twenty because I saw you in your video, you were smoking a good herb, <laughs> and uh, I thought the four twenty was like you know four twenty like does the four twenty no. mean what I think it means? D- no, definitely. I mean, I kind of <laughs> did pick that because I was like, oh, I smoke a lot of weed, <laughs> and my <laughs> initials, my AJ is my initials. <laughs> that's that's the name. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, and then, like, it's funny because I, I didn't really make any weed songs. <laughs> <laughs> but you were definitely under the influence when you were making it. Different faces, right? Definitely, definitely. <laughs> I'm, I'm always, you know, I'm always smoking. It's, it's medical. It's medical. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's medical. I bet you. I bet you. Your aunt wrote the, the prescription for you. <laughs> <laughs> I wish, man. <laughs> What a what a great aunt you have. <laughs> she's, she's absolutely amazing. Like she supports my music a hundred percent. No, that's fantastic, yeah. man. Like that's she's awesome. That that's the bomb right there. That's, that's what you want. At the end of the day, that's what everybody wants. Everybody wants 
just to have fun and have have the people that love you love what you're doing. Sometimes that doesn't come out to be, uh, mm-hmm. but it's uh, it's okay because people do come around. And like you said, your family has come around. They see the value in what you're doing, and um, not that you they not that they not that you needed that to go forward because you actually did it in the beginning without them. Mm-hmm. But it, it just makes it that much easier. No, it really does. Family is really important. And, um, yeah, I'm really blessed that they're not, like, making me go to school or anything. And, like, and you know, I really enjoy this. You know, it's all about the music life. And I just want to keep doing what I'm doing. No, absolutely. And as, as you should. Um, I think, not that I think. Let me change that because just talking to you and then see your music. I know you're gonna go forward in this. Like yeah. you have, you have to. Like you said, you love, you love, you love the lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Right. And and that's important. And yeah. it's different from a nine to five, isn't it? <laughs> it's it's completely different. Like you're on your own grind, and you, you have to. You know, it's it's a lot of work. It's you know, you have to be dedicated. I mean. It's just I have so much passion for it, you know. It just it comes easily, and that, and that's the best thing. We know something comes out easy is a passion. You can yes. make fucking nothing. You just enjoy being around the folks, being around the culture, and that's it. Like mm-hmm. you know, eventually, of course, it would be nice to make some money off of it. <laughs> but <laughs> right, you know, that's the end goal, no doubt. But right now, like, stay passionate about that shit, man. Definitely, man. It's okay. all about that. It really is, you know what I'm saying? Like it really truly is. And you know, everyone just needs to listen to AJ four twenty because like, you know, up and coming, making shit happen, you know, uh good Thanks, listen, good good music. It, good music is good music. And when I was when I listened to your music, this is before I realized you had several pause, I said, Okay, she's different. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Okay, all right. And then I saw your video, and then I was like, okay, well, there's something going on here. <laughs> I was like... Uh, yeah. And I've seen, I seen you try to hide it in your video. I'm, maybe that's me. Maybe I'm seeing things. No, I like, you're right. <laughs> I, I saw you trying to hide it. And I was like, why doesn't she just let it go? Like, how come she's not exposing it? Like, putting a face on it. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because once you take control of it, it just, yeah. It's not gonna. It's not gonna control you anymore. No, there's, you're absolutely right. You're right. There's nothing to be embarrassed about because that's just who you are. You know what I'm saying? And if anything, like I told you before, like take advantage of your situation. Every situation is given to all of us for a reason, and you have to try to find that that silver lining in in your cloud, and just run with that shit. Yeah, man. No, you're absolutely right, and I'm I'm totally you know. Is it's a really it's a really unique thing about me and I just I I mean like my whole thing about this music like why I want more people to listen. I, I just want I want people to be inspired. I wanna help people, you know, with their depression and their emotions and that's that's what my music is all about, you know. And I feel like my disability does add to like it just adds to the whole my personality. It just everything you know what i'm saying i don't really know no no I, I i totally get it because at the end of the day that, that's why I, I said especially with the video i think you should mm-hmm. definitely own it and show it off more because you, 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 there can be another little girl mm-hmm. from from india just like you right that has the same disability or something similar or something totally different right. but because of you exposing it taking ownership of him like yo i'm doing this it, it is what it is this is what I have. Either you, either you fuck with me or you don't. I can really yeah. give two shits. That can really inspire someone. Definitely. That 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 can really, you know, make someone say, you know what? Damn, I'm gonna I'm gonna come out with my own shit too. You know, because I want to say like, there's been many different types of hip hop artists, and it's been mainly about a racial type of thing, mm-hmm. white or black or Hispanic or not. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and then there's a bunch of actually, you know, like Indian rappers coming up. There's a rapper in New York um, coming out. Well, he's out. He's been out for a minute. 
Um, I listened to him too. Uh, his name is Anika Khan. I'm not sure if you heard of him before. I I haven't. I you haven't. haven't? He's he's oh. hot as fuck. He kind of does a Drake type of thing where he sings and he raps. Oh yeah. He, he's bad. He's badass. No, you can find him on Spotify as well. Um, and that's funny because his name Anik is that's my that's my my that's my nephew's name Anik. Uh, so I'm gonna tell you he's half Bangladeshi. So but um um but it, it's it's cool because now you're seeing brown people really come out. Right. Now yeah. you're seeing that brown people have a voice. Yeah, definitely. It, you know what I'm saying? And I think all that needs to be fucking heard or that needs to be used. Like, why not? You know? Right. Right. And there is a straight like I'm like I'm Indian. I'm supposed to be an engineer or whatever the <laughs> right. hell. Uh, so like, <laughs> yeah, there definitely needs to be more more diversity in music and that's what hip hop is all about diversity and stuff so unity acceptance so i mean it would be great to just get out there and just you know inspire more people that's what i want to do you know no yeah, no doubt and i think cool. i think whether you know it or not you're doing it already thank you man. i really appreciate that I, you know you and that's no bullshit you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to bullshit you. If I wanted to bullshit you, I would have cut this off a long time ago. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But our, serious, our seriousness, like, you know, you, your, your, your music, who you are, how you're doing it, um, you're already inspiring folks, whether you know it or not. You know, and the more you get exposed, the more people are going to be aware, yeah. the more awareness you put on it. You know, right. then that, that means you could probably even help, you know, with maybe medications later on or whatever, or become an advocate, whatever you want to do with that. That's totally up to you. You don't have to either. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. yeah. by you putting a face on it and then people, other people know, hey, doesn't matter what type of disability you have, you can rock and roll with it. You can make some shit happen. And there's an audience for that. You know what I'm saying? And people that's, have to, that's, that's a real fucking struggle. Like, I'm, I'm sure growing up wasn't fucking easy. No, hell no. Like I've I've been bullied for sure. Kids kids don't understand shit. You know, kids are cruel. So right. um, so yeah, I mean there there is definitely a story. It's different growing up disabled. It's different and that story does need to be told and it needs to be more mainstream. There there are disabled artists out there. It's just it would be wonderful to get that more mainstream, you know. No, absolutely. I think, but that that's where people like yourself, as you continue to grow, you can mm -hmm. you can probably make that into a a a life's goal for you to say, you know what, I'm gonna make this happen. I'm gonna make, bring attention to it, bring right. other people around. You know, whether you're starting a different IG page, or maybe you start your own fucking label just for disabled people, for people with yeah. disabilities. You know what I'm saying? Like just so just so that other because the the big conglomerates, big capital records and Sony and whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're so out of fucking touch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they're, so, they're, they're so, like, still on the old school wave. You know, of course, they hired some some people to help out with the new, the new you know, social media shit, but mm. they, they can't win with the new platform of everyone going independent. Oh, yeah, definitely. I see, I see that happening for sure. And underground hip hop and music, that's where it's at right now. I mean, there would be no mainstream without the underground, you know. Absolutely. No, you're absolutely right. And and that's how hip hop has survived. Hip hop has evolved, which is great. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I'm a, I might be I may be an OG, but I like the new hip hop. There's some that I like more than others, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm still one for lyrics, I'm still one for a proper beat, whatever. But right. Like the, the way rock and roll had to had to kind of have subcategories. Uh -huh. Hip hop hip hop has subcategories now. You know yeah, what I'm saying? So I see that. See how it's evolving. And I yeah, love it. it had to. It had to grow its wings. You know what I'm saying? The golden age of hip hop was the nineties and those cats took it as far as they can take it to. And they said, Okay, new generation, do what you gotta do with it. The fucked up thing is that they weren't fucking with the new generation. They said, Oh, you're destroying hip hop. But no. Mm -hmm. Hip hop is still rock and roll, and hip hop is still going forward. It's just breaking off to different branches now. Now it's like, yo, this is mumble rap. If you like that, that's cool. You have that. This is more of a popish type of hip hop. Like when Linkin yeah. Park came out, Linkin Park was the only group that's kind of a, of a half like hybrid of rock and roll and 
<laughs> fucking uh, hip hop, like, and they were accepted, right? So, yeah. how come another group can't come out like that again? Which I'm sure there's probably a group out there now. And if you are that group, I'm gonna find you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> you know, things like that. I know. I, I think hip hop, the culture, I love it. You know, because of the culture itself, coming from a really urbanized feel. You know, we 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 really rule the world with the look, the style, and all that shit. Yeah, man, it, it's everywhere. It it affects all parts of society and stuff. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Yo, AJ, this has been a fantastic conversation. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Yeah, I definitely enjoyed this interview, um, Johnny. It was really really great talking to you. Uh, same here, man. Like, yo, thank you, thank you so much for giving me your time, you know, and your story. Cause I think your story is huge. You know, thank you for coming thank on the Giant Nomad podcast, man. Like, um, yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for listening to my music and and you know finding me. Appreciate that so much. You know, now, you know, make sure you keep in touch. We're gonna trade numbers. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna follow yeah. up with you. Make sure you keep on doing your thing. I'm gonna keep on listening to you. Make sure you get those plays on Spotify. You know what I'm saying? And and folks, you can find. AJ420 on all social media platforms, like she said. The currently I'm listening to her on on Spotify. The name of the of the EP that which she released, released last year was Different Faces. Yeah. And including the interludes and everything, she has 13 songs on there on her EP. Um and then you have uh a new album, new EP coming out. Another EP coming out. That's seven songs. Seven songs coming out and 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 right before March, before yeah. her uh, performance in, in San Fran. So, be looking out. Subscribe and um, AJ, what's your handle on um, IG? Yeah, definitely follow me on Instagram and Twitter. AJ four twenty the rapper. Um, so I'm always on my social media. You can hit me up. You know. Hell yeah! Like, like I said, I, I just made a new friend. Um, oh yeah. Listen to her music. Support your girl. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's she's gonna be big. <laughs> Thank you. I hope. <laughs> hopefully, you never know, man. <laughs> no hope. You gotta make sure you own that shit. It's gonna happen. Right. <laughs> we we're gonna make it happen. You're gonna make that shit happen for real. I got your back on that, yo. So, for yo, sure. check her out. Thank you so much again, AJ420. And yeah. I'll talk to you soon, yeah. Peace. Right. Thanks. Peace.